OK, boys and girls, sports fans, it's Den here, and we're in London Village at some unnamed hotel. And I'm with Mr. Matt Quinn, CTO Tipco, company that does all that stuff around integration and middleware, middleware and analytics and cloud and, and, and social. Yeah. Analytics is not boring. Analytics is exciting. How are we going to keep people awake? Well, we could always dance. Nah, no. don't sing. So. Well, that's an option. How about we talk about big data? Yeah. Okay, big data. What does it mean to Tipco? Come on, Matt. All right. So our view is very, very simple. We 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 see the big challenge with with big data at the moment is that it it really doesn't focus on the operational outcome. Mm. All right. And so we we believe that that big data is actually a problem of two halves. We see data at rest and data at motion. Yep. Right. Data at rest, all your historical information, your transactional information, all, all the, the stuff rich that sits, sits stuff. in the ERP and yep. the yep. CRM and what. But, but but not just not just the ERPs. I think that one of the challenges that people have had to come to grips with is the fact that big data really forces you to think about data as data, not just in the database, yeah. outside of it. So machine generated data and log files and things like that can become just as important as the stuff that's in the, in the pretty little database box. Some people would argue that machine data is actually more important because A, there's more of it, mm -hmm. and B, you can do more with it. Well, and the third thing is it's actually really easy to get at. Right. Is it? It's, it's hard to process at speed and hard to process at volume. Right. But just about every application, every device, every uh, every system will generate okay. a log file. Okay. The challenge isn't in getting that, going to that machine and getting the log file. It's doing it ten thousand, a hundred thousand times, okay. and doing it, you know, millions of times per second. Right. But so so anyway, going back, so we, we've got this data at rest, and and we have tools like Spotfire that help you analyze and identify those patterns. Mm. But the second thing is, once you've found that pattern, mm. well, fantastic. What are you going to do about it? Mm. Right. What are you going to do about it in the context of the business? And this is really where data in motion becomes pretty important, which is, you know, after identifying those patterns, I then want to, to look at that as they are occurring. Uh, and so a good example here would be something like fraud detection. Yeah. I, I could analyze the history of transactions over 20 years. I could add in all these other great information sources, you mm -hmm. know, things from Twitter and Facebook and other sources mm. of, uh, of social information that may right. inform my decision. I may discover a great pattern. Mm. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to write a report and run it three weeks after looking at the last three weeks saying how much fraud happened. I want to be able to capture the fraud as it's actually occurring. Mm. Uh, and so that's where the data in motion comes in place. I can look at these event streams that are coming in, all of these different events coming from all these different sources, yeah. and I can start to correlate them together to identify when fraud is actually occurring and then take action at that particular moment. Hold it, hold it when fraud is occurring or when it is most likely to occur? It could be both. Really? Right. And it really depends a little bit on what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Right? And it also, quite frankly, depends on the domain you're going after. Fraud is actually a really good example mm. because you may turn around and say, look, what I need to be able to do is I need to be able to identify the fraud as it happens, right? So capture mm. it there. And so mm. you can imagine you're at a point of sale, someone swipes a credit card, the credit card doesn't match the loyalty information, and, it, and the, the things in the basket don't match what this person has bought before from that particular chain. Right. You may actually have to, just from a governance and from a regulatory point of view, have to let that transaction go through before you take action. Right. Right. Alternatively, uh, and if you're looking at uh, what's occurring maybe from an internet channel point of view, mm -hmm. you may start to see the emergence of a pattern, which is a, a leading indicator to potential mm. fraud, and you may decide, okay, that's it, I'm going to capture it at that particular moment. In okay, time. so so when we use the word fraud, <coughs> we have to, in fact, contextualize that as well mm -hmm. in terms of the type of transaction, where it's occurring, yep. the kind of commerce being going going on, and all the rest of it. Yep. We can't just simply say, oh, fraud, uh, okay, fine, we know, algorithm, boom. Yeah, no, no, and that's, and so this is actually one of the fundamental challenges that people, I think, have started to come to grips with with big data in general, yeah. is that they, it, big data. You know, challenge number one is how do you make it operational? The second thing is big data tends to be very domain specific. Right. Right. The, the algorithms, the approaches, even the tools will differ from, from industry to industry. Mm. An example of that is if you look at something like, um, you look at financial services, you look at capital markets. Mm. You know, to, to some people, they've been doing, especially to people within capital markets, they would say, look, we've been doing kind of big data for, yeah, for yeah, decades. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we've always they had to deal with it. They kind of laugh at you, don't they, when you well, walk because, in and say but, that? But, you know, the funny thing is, they've had to deal with it, but their focus is, has always been on the, the, the kind of the data in motion. Yeah. Data at rest has been important, but the data in motion has been really, really important. Yep. Whereas if you look at a retailer, 
it's been the focus over the last couple of years has now been on kind of the data rest, the richness of all the information they've got. They're only now starting to get the groups with the kind of the fact that they've got access now to all of this real time information. Right, right. Right. Because some of that was, you know, stores themselves yeah. weren't necessarily connected to an active network yeah. um, to, to get those streams. So, you know, everyone has a different focus, a different perspective. What we've done is we've put the, the platform together, we've put the tools in place. We put methodologies in place that allow customers to very quickly identify what the, the business problem is. Mm. And, and I think there was a the phrase used before, what the outcome needs to be. Yeah. Uh, and then we can employ a whole raft of different, different strategies to, to get there. Right. One example um, is we've got a group of data scientists. Mm. Right? And sometimes- These exist? These guys these, exist? These exist, yeah. Wow. We, we acquired a company um, four years ago, five years ago called Insightful. Mm. Um, and had a group of data scientists uh, within that that, right. uh, that helped build the product and, and also help customers use statistical packages. Oh, they're like they're stats guys, basically. These are stats right. guys. Okay. But they've got broad experiences. And so oftentimes, these guys get involved in the projects up front right. to do something that's really simple, which is, what data do you have and what are you trying to do? Mm. Because they can, walk, they can work backwards to understand, okay, you've got this piece of information, but in order to detect fraud or to, to put this, uh, this particular trading strategy in place or mm. to, to look at network outage mm. and abnormal kind of network detection, mm. to put all these things in place, you need the following sources of information. Right. Where are they? Right. Right. And then, of course, you get to the, the actual modeling exercises. So you've got plenty of work in front of you. We, we do, but we believe that we've, we've really got the right pieces in place. We, we, the, the message around... You know, being able to to understand the past to anticipate the future is something that that people really kind of get. They understand that the next step of big data is operationalizing big data. We have the people, we mm. have the methodologies, and the products. So I think we're in a really good position. You heard it here first, boys and girls. Matt Quinn, the man who knows. <laughs>